Really wish we had that moan from last week. You're a sick man. So y'all know, like, if my student loan debt gets forgiven, I'm, like, real brand new. I'm going to make me pay the taxes on it. But I'm still, like, brand new. You're not even making those payments. I was for, like, a year and a half. I'm like, fuck this. What's up, good people? Live from Hawthorne, California. It's your Thursday night spot for NFL takes, topical tangents, concise commentary for the culture, I'm P.D. Camarillo. I'm Kent Barry. And we are Touchdowns and Tangents. On the line with us, we also have our amazing team. Shout out to Lucas. Say what's up to the people. And we got Nikki out in... I just know you're on the west side. Marina Del Rey. Marina Del Rey. Nice, nice. How are you both doing? Howdy. Everyone good? Can be better. All right, good to hear. <laughs> Lucas is not on a five five minute time delay t- tonight, so hopefully we can get a little of his hot takes. I know he he's got a lot that he's uh, ready to to burn everyone with. But uh, yeah, Kenny, how how are you, sir? Eh, I'm here. It's, you know, it's pretty good. I mean, it's a Thursday. You're maintaining, yeah. Ask me a week from now. All right, man. So, should we just get right to the shit? Let's talk, Let's talk, about, about, it. It. Let's talk about it. Hot breaking news. Breaking news. Christian McCaffrey traded to the San Francisco 49ers. I couldn't even believe it myself, which I kind of called. My boss just texted me about it. Uh, Kenny did not call it. He I just did. said he would trade Debo for CMC, which the 49ers did not even have to do. All they had to give up was a second round pick in this year's draft and a third round pick in next year's draft, correct? They got a 2023 20, second round pick, third round pick, fourth round pick, and then a 2024 fifth round pick. Damn. And Kawhi's which, back, boy. All you have to do is give You could have gave up a first. And that's still better than all those picks combined. I'm like thoroughly amazed. I mean, but given the contract situation, given the fact that the Panthers have no leverage, everyone knows they're rebuilding, and given McCaffrey's injury history and overall the devaluation of running backs. He pretty much just... Plus, I mean, San receiver. Francisco, their running backs are always made out of paper mache. So he fits right in. I think it's a fair trade for both teams. Honestly, they both get what they want. Like, yeah, the Panthers maybe could have gotten more, but they probably would have had to wait till the offseason, assuming everything goes right and CMC is still healthy then. But right now, midseason, turning the page, rebuilding, I think it's a fair move. I just wonder who's next in Carolina. DJ Shaq, Moore, Brian DJ Burns. Moore, Shaq Thompson. I think they're going to keep the defense and just tear the offense I mean, I think apart. they'll keep Brian Burns, but I think Shaq Thompson is is getting closer to 30. I think he could be moved. I feel like they're just going to keep the defense intact and just destroy the offense from the ground up. The sad thing is, though, they just were, like, building it up. And Matt Rule, I mean, that's why he was hired. All they, they needed was it. a QB. Now they have... I mean, Deontay Foreman is definitely a better between the tackles runner than CMC. But like I told y'all this when CMC was coming out of college, y'all keep thinking he's going to get 300, 400 touches a year and not break down. He'll eventually have to switch to wide receiver. Mark my words. But yeah, I I bet the Rams fans are shaking in their boots. I think that neutralizes. Rams fans are yelling fuck in the shower. Crying because I mean they essentially got Bobby Wagner to kind of neutralize the fact that the Niners just ran the ball down their throats three times a year, but now you add in Christian McCaffrey and you already have Debo and now it's you really have Ying and Yang. Like, what do you want? And wait until Trey Lance comes back next year. 
Like literally, you could just say, "Hey, Christian McCaffrey, you're gonna get some running back touches. You're gonna get some wide receiver." They're touches. literally playing NFL Street. Like you're not gonna be our full time running back because you can't do it. But we're gonna have you do what Debo does a little bit, and we're gonna spread the ball out and run when we have to. Think about that. They essentially have four wide receiver, three wide receivers, and the tight end. That's wild. Like. They have Ayuk, who leads the team in touchdowns. Debo, who leads the team in receiving. Kittle, who's been hurt, but he's still a threat. He's the safety blanket. Yeah, he's a chain mover. And throwing CMC, they can go empty backfield. They can get even more creative with Jimmy G. That's just one less thing Jimmy G has to worry about. He just has to distribute the ball. Let's say, let's say somehow the Ravens totally shit the bed on this Lamar thing, and they say, "Well, we'll give you Jimmy G and Trey Lance." Like the attempt to sign Who would Lamar. Do that trade. Um, the Ravens. That's a little horrible. If the Ravens don't pay Lamar, yeah, I would take Trey Lance in that's the trade. That's like that's like basically trading. You're like. 10 uh, wife Instagram influencer who's nice and does everything perfect and cooks for you and trading her for two baby mamas. Like how many people do that? A lot. <laughs> I guess, man, you tell just... like if the Ravens really don't have the balls to pay Lamar, you might as well get Trey Lance and then you might as well get Trey Lance and get all the Niners draft picks and you throw in Javon Kinlaw. Because it's not like he's doing much there. All right. Anything else on CMC before we move on? This just goes to show you the salary cap doesn't matter. And the many star players don't have the value they think they do. So when I tell you, hey, this weird-ass trade could happen, maybe you should believe me next time. No, I call this, is Ram- not, this is I, not. Tra- I'm the guy who called Jalen Ramsey before it happened. This is not the same thing. And I told thing. you the Niners should this get not CMC the same for thing. cheap. Not the same thing. You literally called, whoops, too many Jolly Ranchers. You literally called Jalen Ramsey out of nowhere. With this, and you Anthony just threw Davis some shit into the honest, ether, and you just that. threw some shit into the ether like three months ago, and now you're like loosely trying to connect the dots and say you know, like, oh, I, I said it. You I was like, McCaffrey nah, going to get out of Carolina. The same, bro. They're going to move McCaffrey. And if you're not going to pay Debo, trade him for McCaffrey. But, but clearly, they paid Debo. Yes, they did, and it's gotten so bad in Carolina that his value got so decreased that you could trade for him. So my point still stands, and in theory, I was right. I you were right, though. I wasn't, <clears throat> I wasn't right on the nose like what Paul George just did, but I was right in principle over a lot. They're up by 15 points. This is, Kawhi didn't even start, my guy. Isn't Reggie Jackson the starter or point guard? Yeah, but Kawhi came off the bench. Yeah, I know that. Just wait till it's actually full a great speed. look. Just wait till we have full speed. It's over, bro. These motherfuckers have no shooters. Why did they not bring Melo back? I'm confused. Why is uh, LeBron James complaining about who's this? Thing, who's this dude wearing 95? Get him off the court. I don't care. That's if he's the made. first Mexican Laker of all time. Show, Why show the respect. fuck is he wearing? Show bro. some respect, bro. Bro, Mexican hoopers don't scare me. Second off. Why is he wearing that? Dude, that dude's been around the G League. He played in Mexico. He has a he won a championship with the Warriors as he a backup. A as like he was at the end of the bench. Calm down. No, he eh, he wasn't the key reason they won. He, he was wasn't Jordan rotation. Poole. He was in the rotation, and you could replace him with somebody else. Calm down. Well, the Lakers definitely have in their rotation, so I don't know why you're talking shit. Because they have no other shooters, and he's finally getting some burn. But I'm just mad he's wearing 95. Okay, I fell into his trap. Why are basketball players wearing any number over 55? I fell into his trap. I'm talking to NBA with Kenny. Fuck. Why are you wearing 50? Why are you wearing anything over 55 in basketball? That's corny as fuck. Why are you wearing 95, bro, in basketball? Moving on. The fuck? There's only 15 spots on the bench. Uh, Lucas, you want to give us some uh, analysis from the Thursday night game? 
Yeah, uh, I mean, it's sort of slow, but then, um, you know, the second half of Hamilton and Wilson actually uh, got a bunch of picks off of the Red Rifle, so. Oh, yeah, I saw that. That was crazy. The second half. Yeah, he heated up in the second half for sure, but uh, it doesn't matter because Kyler just went home to play Call of Duty anyway, so, yeah. <laughs> I mean, he's a bust, so. Is he a bust? That's a hard take. That's definitely a hard take because he's not a bust. I think you got to get rid of the coach. I mean, you got to get rid of Cliff Kingsbury. He's not a good coach. I mean, at this point, he wasn't a good coach in college. At this point, you got to listen to it. No. At this point, you got to listen to it. Because, I mean, how many receivers did they get him, right? Like, his head coach is double tail. They've gotten him like. Robbie Anderson's like the fifth receiver they've gotten him. It's ridiculous, dude. Nikki, you got some thoughts? You said, no, he's not. Because he played at Texas A&M, so you got to say something good about him. Uh, I feel like everybody, like, they're a little bit um, overcritical of Kyler Murray, in my opinion. I mean, obviously, I'm biased because, you know, he did go to A&M and Oklahoma, so, like, I love him double. But I don't know, like, everybody makes fun of him because he's short or whatever, but, you know, he made more money. He played he play better than any of all of them combined, so I don't know. I mean, he played really good tonight. I mean, you know, the addition of DeHaan, or excuse me, Hopkins coming back, um, you know, really helped out the offense and kind of like brought him back to a point where he should have been at the beginning of the season. So, but he's only going up so far. We'll see. His head know. coach is a bum. I think no. his I, head coach had a losing yeah. record in college. His head coach does suck, but he has a lot of well, weapons. I mean, he did get fired. Because he couldn't win with Patrick Mahomes. We'll see. Let's never forget that. We'll see I that watched Cliff, Cliff Kingsbury in college. Bruh sucked. But if I, he was any less uglier, he would have never got that coaching job. But uh, Ken, Kenny's guy, Isaiah Simmons, had a, a pick six. Oh, yeah, him too. I six forgot six. about him, yes. That man, so out here playing, pick sixes. that man out here playing linebacker, free safety, DN. Bro, he smacked the fuck out of Henry Renfro. Hunter Renfro got his permanent teammate, CT. Dog. He got permanent CT. His, he hit that man in the back teammate. of the head. <laughs> I would never want to get hit that hard. Just shoot me, and I'll try to survive in the hospital. Don't hit me that hard. He had a club. He had a club filled with resentment. Though, yeah, you were Dabble's favorite. You weren't even the best receiver on the team. I don't know why. Like, so many other receivers should have been playing above you. T. Higgins could have caught that pass. All right, but I digress. Monday Night Football. I was there on site, despite my um, Uber getting in a small fender bender. I'm about to say that was wild. Yeah, but you were getting uh, flamed in the chat for it, and I was like, "Are you alive? Are you okay?" Times <laughs> was there. There's a bunch of people we knew from a certain another point in our lives that were there. Oh yeah, I don't even know. The algorithm doesn't even put them in front of me. So, uh, but yeah, no, um, it was a good, good experience. Decent game. Ended up in overtime, but not really like a good overtime. It was kind of like a. Who's going to stop shitting the bed first over time? Ultimately, uh, the Chargers wheeled it out. Chargers fans were really happy. So hopefully someone will buy my fucking tickets now. Which, by the way, is fucked up in itself because I went on on a Twitter rant about this this week. But it's like, how the fuck? Like, like. Literally, my friend who has Rams tickets in the 100 level can't sell his tickets at face value. I have tickets just a little bit higher, can't sell my tickets. And it's because football is just not a part of L.A. culture. Like, too much traffic. We've been watching the game for 20 years. And now all of a sudden, you just flush the market with all this supply, 50,000 tickets every single week, and the demand just has not caught up. Plus inflation, everyone's hurting. That feels a bad bunny concert. So, you know, for you to have been off like a fat cat. Those those music concerts, music but yeah, concerts Steve, are hitting. We'll get to that later, but I mean Cronky paid all that money to St. Louis for leaving in bad faith. He gave up four hundred million. Paid and back. SoFi, which was already supposed to be the most expensive stadium. Went way over budget because of COVID, supply chain, people dying, bunch of shit. So, yeah, I don't know how that investment is turning out for Cronky, but I know for L.A. and season ticket holders right now, it's not 
not looking too great. So, but hey, at least we're not playing in the same stadium as the Commandos. So there's that. <laughs> Whatever. All right, you got an RIP you want to shout out? Uh, yes, RIP to apparently he was a referee and a basketball player. Hmm. Um, it's his first name. I don't have the rundown in front of me. Charlie Trip. Tripp- yeah, Trippy. Trippy. Hundred years old. Uh, Dang. Story broke like four o'clock yesterday. Uh, help the well, Chicago actually, Cardinals. I just heard about an NBA ref that just died. Yeah, so, we, Tony Brown. I think he had cancer. Fifty-five. Mm. Um. Yeah. It was, it's crazy, man. RIP. Like, like this dude lived to be a hundred. First off, won a championship in nineteen forty-seven with the Chicago Cardinals. The Cardinals had like eight different team names. It's kind of crazy. We talk about the Ravens and the Browns, but like the Chicago Cardinals, it was, it's a lot. But rest in peace to that man, the legacy that he had. Rest in peace to Tony Brown. Um, I think that's it as far as like RPs this week. Much football, Kenny. Boy, oh fucking boy. Well, I think we all saw the screw job in, in Utah. Rice Echo Stadium. I know, like, that they were um, honoring the two players who died in the past two years, the corner and the running back who actually shot himself. The corner, I think, got killed in the drive-by or something like that. Like, somebody gunned him down. It was, it was really sad. Unfortunate. And then they had their faces on the helmets. But we got to – we can't sit up here and act like USC wasn't about to go up 28-0 to zero in the first half. Um and the refs pretty much spotted them three touchdowns. I can't ignore that. That's why Lincoln Riley said the officiating was bad. I think, um, yeah. Not people this were, shit. No, people were straight up saying, no, USC played bad um, offensively and defensively. But that interception, when that, that, that non-roughing the passer call, this is why roughing the passer and the pros is so bad because it's bled into college now. Like, you know how many times defensive players get held, pushed in the back, uh, cut block, cut blocked, and nobody calls anything? They get their, their helmet or their jersey ripped off their body because the holding was that egregious and nobody says anything. But the QB cameras and barely got put. Like, literally, you're trying to, like, referee physics out of the game. If you're a D tackle and you're moving that fast and you stop yourself from running through a guy. Yo, that shit was funny. Uh, they were talking to Derek Carr in a podcast about the Chris Jones call. And he was like, I don't know what the fuck happened. Like, I was just playing football. Like, I thought Chris got a sack in his a fumble. Like, I thought that was it. And I saw the, the ref and I was like, okay, yeah, you're right. He did hit me. Yep. He laid on me. Yep. That's the rule. Yep. And then Chris... And then, <laughs> Chris looked at me and I was like, bro, what you want me to do? <laughs> and he's like, and he's like, yeah, you know, Chris is like literally one of the best players in the whole entire league. He made an outstanding play, but like, I mean, that's the rule. Was, he's like, I didn't make the rule, but it, the rule is the rule. And like, that is, it is what it is, but yeah, it, it sucks for him. Really? And then cost him, it cost him a touchdown. He said, but yep. What can but you do? USC, they were getting, it was like, 13 penalties to, like, four. It was, like, a blatant, egregious over over penalization of calls against USC. And it was always at key times. I go a third down. They call defensive holding. They call pass interference on Makai Blackman on a ball that was uncatchable. That ended up scoring on that drive. It's like... They just kept getting calls to keep Utah in the game. And it was gross, and the Pac- people were complaining, and they're like, well, because the Pac-12 commissioner got what he wanted. A loss against USC. If they, even if they went out, Utah, if Utah and USC went out, Utah owns the tiebreaker. 
It will be a three-way tie, actually. But USC is ranked higher than UCLA. No, US, no I think they're... No, they're not ranked higher than UCLA, but they're definitely ranked higher than Utah. But my issue is, even if they're playing that bad, you don't bail out bail out Utah like four different times the way they did. That shit was disrespectful to the game. It was a slap in everybody's face. It was an insult to our intelligence because you clearly know for a fact, and you can watch it, that number 47, the D-tackle for USC, he barely touched Rizzing. Like, it was almost like, where else is he going to go? One time they called roughing the pass or Nick Figueroa. No, they called targeting on, they called three targeting plays in a row. And they overturned them both. And when you see the targeting play, Nick Figueroa was running full speed and ran into his teammate. Raylan Goforth ran into his teammate in addition to hitting the ball carrier. Like he hit more of his teammate than he did at the Utah uh, running back. And honestly, if you look at running the ball wise, USC didn't do too bad. It's just they couldn't get off the de- they couldn't get off the ball key downs, and mostly they couldn't stop um, their tight the tight end for uh, I think his name was Kaiser or something like that, or whatever the tight end's name was for Utah was probably going to be on the Mackey list. He had 16 catches, 234 yards, and one touchdown. That's disgraceful. First off. He shouldn't be lighting you up like that. Secondly, Eric Gentry got hurt, and he's honestly their he's their most important defensive player outside of Tui. Tui. Because Eric Gentry is like six seven playing middle linebacker. Can't really throw on him. He's fast enough to where he can cover slot guys. He shuts down a lot of stuff in the passing game over the middle of the field. Um and Shane Lee is not a coverage linebacker. He's a thumper. He should really just be playing middle linebacker and, like, kind of just saying, look, I'm taking everything in front of me because he can't really – he's not a good coverage guy. I don't I don't know what happened at Bama, but he's just not a good coverage guy. Raylan Goforth is a little bit better. He can do a little bit more. But, like, Shane Lee is the thumper. Like, he will knock somebody out. He will cause fumbles and all that. But it was just kind of, like, really a shame to see Utah be given that game. Because even if you take away, okay, let's say, you know, the tight end doesn't go off the way he did. He has 234 receiving yards. That was really the only person beating them. Cam Risen had a couple. All right, touchdowns. man. Well, you've already talked about USC for like ten minutes. Nobody cares. This shit was like, like five the, no. years ago. All right, cool, cool. Bottom line is the Pac-12 just got really interesting because UCLA beat the dog shit out of Utah, but Utah beat USC. So now USC UCLA is going to be the biggest game. Well, UCLA has Oregon this week, right? Yep. But even if they lose to Oregon, Oregon I think has like two losses. They have one in the Pac-12. They have one period. They're okay. right behind um, UCLA in the rankings. Well, bottom line is it's going to be a very interesting race for who wins in the Pac-12. Uh, uh, Nikki, you have any uh, uh, body shots you want to get in there on USC? Or Texas A&M, Alabama losing to Tennessee, and Chase McGrath, by the way. Pretty bad, but, um, was really bad. I'm not going to sit here and like – you know, talk crap when I when I can know, when I know better. Same thing with Alabama. The officiating in the Tennessee game was atrocious. I mean, I I, I wanted Alabama to lose just as much as the next guy, but that it was absolutely atrocious. Like they uh, threw the game for Alabama and for USC both. But I'm still happy they lost, and I'm still happy that Lincoln Riley went home crying for sure. I still feel like Tennessee earned it a little bit more though. <laughs> I feel like Tennessee earned it. I mean, and Alabama's I kicker missed oh, yeah, that. Sure. He missed that kick. So it's like Alabama's kicker. Had a chance to win it, still missed. Chase McGrath was a walk on at USC, transferred. Brew McCoy had a couple uh, key catches in that game. Um, their receiver had five. He had six catches or seven catches for like 207 yards and five touchdowns. Uh, Tennessee's wide receiver. So he's probably going to get some first-round consideration. 
um, some Jalen Waddle kind of moments out there. And when you throw up five touchdowns by yourself against Bama, that kind of says a lot. Heaton Hooker made himself some money for sure. Um, but yeah, now Tennessee essentially, if they went out and beat Georgia, they're going to be the number one team in the country. They really like they just they already beat Florida. They really just have to avoid some pickups, and they just have Georgia left in the SEC title game. But Bama, Bama loses one more time, the dream is dead. I mean, isn't the dream already been dead? Nah, they only have one loss. But if they lose to LSU after the game that LSU had against Florida. Well, you've been talking about them, how they're much more immortal this year. Yeah, of course. I mean, Bryce Young was hurt. Uh, their defense definitely ain't what it used to be. And I just think, by the way, Liz Truss, who was like head of parliament in the UK, quit, and now she's already working for Nick That's Saban. a meme. That was a meme. <laughs> She worked for the Cleveland Browns. <laughs> this bitch. <laughs> that was a meme, bro. Don't be shredding fake news. You sure? Because it, it was in my it was in my work group chat. Wait, I'm was like, it really? It was in my work group chat. Wait, I, was that real? I, I, Can one of you guys look that up to see if that was I, real? I don't know. I, I think she might she be working with Alabama. I don't know. It looked pretty real to me. I wouldn't be surprised. <laughs> but um, yeah, man, this college football thing is. It's just very interesting. Um, by the way, James Madison was ranked. Tulane was ranked. It's not real, bro. I told you it wasn't it real. It was funny, though, because, like, damn. You went from, <laughs> like, an evil-ass parliament. Ready, bro. She don't know nothing about football. <laughs> She's just a Browns fan, which already kind of states the point. And then she ran the evil-ass British parliament. So there you go. Games are going to be important going forward. Pac-12, SEC, Big Ten. Ohio State's just sitting pretty. Michigan's just beating the shit out of people running the ball. Clemson really just has to win out. They got past Florida State. I would love to see Clemson versus USC. I think that would be a great game. I think that's the game that's needed. I just don't think that game is going to happen, which it kind of sucks, but, you know. Oh, look, the Lakers came back. But, yeah, college football-wise, oh, yeah. Um, This is what I want to say for Jackson State because uh, Deion Sanders was talking about how, like, oh, y'all want to talk about tradition. He's like, miss me with that tradition match. We went up 14 on Grambling State, and all their fans left. So y'all front runners. You're not, y'all are not really supporting the culture. How are you going to sit up here and talk to me about fandom? I'm so over this. Like HBCU, like Renaissance, like especially like, when you get a bunch of four star transfers. They're trying to like capture the NBA like Twitter beef stuff, like trying to get attention to themselves by like going at each other. But it's like no one ever really cared. Exactly, because like, you don't need to go to an HBCU to get to the NFL. You can go to an HBCU to get to the NFL, but the ownership ain't there. It's not the same. Like. It's not it's not black it's not even hundred percent black owned. So it's like I mean, yeah, you can go to HBCU as great, but I'd rather have all the amenities of a Florida or USC. Like I go sit up here and say I'm not black because I didn't go to HBCU when it's plenty of like black people who sold out black people who went I've to HBCUs. Never, I've never heard it. I've never heard anyone question another person's blackness. Because That's because you're not black and you don't have those conversations with other black people. I do. People have, come up, to you. People have come up to you and be like, you're not black because you didn't go to HBCU. No, but they have this aura of like they're blacker because they went to an HBCU and it's like I mean, I talked to Obi about it and he's like see both sides of it but for me going to hbc was the best thing for me but then there's a portion of black people boule kind of because you got to remember when king king was in the boule and he went to an hbcu and 
he had people in his own fraternity spying on him for the U.S. government. Like, HBC, HBCU's been infiltrated, is my point. So when you say, oh, you want HBCU, like, you want black people to value HBCUs, but how are we going to value them if the internal infrastructure, the people running them, don't value it? How are you going to sit up here and get mad at Jackson State but your team was down 14 and you left during homecoming. You left early during homecoming at HBCU. That's just disrespectful. Like, you can't say you're really about the culture. And by the way, I also saw this girl tweet out some dumb shit saying, is homecoming really for like, if you're 30 still going to homecoming at your college, is that a problem? And then tw- Twitter quickly ran her her rights. It's called homecoming for a reason. It's geared towards alumni so people can come back home. Hence the term homecoming. How are you going to call it homecoming and you go there currently? It ain't homecoming. You just at the house. You chilling. So, yeah. I'm on a 10. Oops. That's it. I didn't mean to play that, but that was... I feel like you did. I didn't mean to. I'm just never going to believe that you did. But that... It was fitting nonetheless. All right. Well, I hit touchdown or turnover when I hit to meet me when I meant to hit take your tangent. Now that so, I believe. Who wants to take touchdown or turnover? Nikki, Lucas. Don't uh, fight each other. Do, 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 do. A- everyone wants to do it in the production meeting, but we're on the air. What is that segment again, bro? Touchdown or turnover? I'll do it. Go ahead. Tee it up yeah, for okay. us. I just say whatever's on my mind, bro. You want to you wanna set up the question for us so that we can talk about it? Oh, for one. Okay. Um, sorry, up, it can be about anything, right? No. So on the rundown, <laughs> sir. Oh, for two. Oh, All for right. two. Yes, uh, that that spotlight kind of hot, ain't it? <laughs> Key, Sorry, I get nervous, bro. You're good, Nikki. I know you're in the rundown. I see you in the rundown. <laughs> you too in the production meeting. Yeah, go ahead, Lucas. You can do the next one. I lead by example. All right, all right. Touchdown or turnover? Let's see. So, Jim. You're saying, I don't know if that's how you yep. pronounce it. Mm-hmm. Outright says Daniel Snyder should be removed as an NFL owner. Touchdown or turnover? You want to go first, Kenny? Yeah, I'll go first. Uh, Jim Irsay pretty much wanted all the smoke and was like, we need to get him out of here. He needs to go. We have at least 24 owners who are willing to vote him out. Bro, who the fuck is Jim Irsay to say anyone should get out of the league? Are we just going to forget his whole... Dope fiending, yeah. drug peddling, could have got 115 years for all that work in his car. And he was drunk. And he got a DUI. I'm just saying. Turnover. When you got to agree. Six. When I got to agree with Jim Mersey. That's a pick six, man. It should be a turnover, but I'm going to give it a touchdown. So it's a turnover and a, a touchdown. touchdown. It's, it's a, a touchdown. turnover and a touchdown. Hey, man, it's a necessary evil. All right, next one. When billionaires fight, that's a good thing. All right, all right. Jerry Jones tells Robert Kraft, don't fuck with me, after being the dissenting vote out of 31 to allow Compensations Committee to open up negotiations for a new contract for NFL Commissioner Roger Goodell. Hmm. I'm going to say it's a touchdown because Jerry Jones has long been the, like, dark ruler of the rebellion in the NFL. So, yeah, I mean, really, nobody can fuck with Jerry Jones. I mean, he pretty much got backhand payment off the whole SoFi deal and the Vegas deal after he pretty much screwed the Raiders out of L.A., but I digress. Kenny? I got to call it another touchdown. Uh, Jim Irsay, like, imagine Daniel Snyder and Jerry Jones teaming up, but I don't think that because Jerry Jones or Daniel Snyder came out and said that he has 
PI is following all these owners near his dirt on uh, Jerry Jones, which would lead me to believe he just wants to see the world burn if they try to take his team. Basically. Which, shit. I mean, Robert Kraft is like. I mean, did he already give the team to his, like, um, not ex wife, but like a strange wife? She kind of runs the team. Well, because, like, but they're they married. Him. Like, they're still married. So, my thing is, um, that's kind of like when Jerry West gave his team to his wife. It's like if Jerry West gave his team to his daughter. When Jerry West gave the team to Jim, the horse racer, I'm not even going to say his name. When the horse racer was running the Lakers. That was before him. His son is a horse racer. Oh, no, it's not the same thing. Like, no, but I mean, like, he's running the team, but other people are really Jerry running the West, team. Jerry West. Not Jerry West. I'm talking about, like. Jerry West sold the team to the Laker to the yeah, yeah, Bus yeah. Family Trust, which was owned by the wife who yeah. he was divorced from. Yeah. But I'm so talking that's what I was comparing it to. Yeah, but I'm talking about in the later years. Yeah, I know what you're talking about. Yeah. Like, like I, I got Jeannie the joke was the really end. running the show. I got the joke at the end. But yeah, so you factor in the f- that like at the owners' meeting, they're like, look, Goodell's making us money, like blah, 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 blah. And then Jerry's like, nah, fuck that. Dissenting opinion. Why? Don't fuck with me. Hey, man, don't fuck with me, bro. I don't care if you won all the Super Bowls. All right, Robert Kraft, don't fuck with me. I feel like that's where he was kind of at with it. And the owners are always going to come down against the players, but if you're going to try to ice out Goodell and not say he hasn't earned his money, he's definitely earned his money for what he's had to be. And for what he's like, what they've tried to make him for how he's tried to please both sides, even though he works for the owners, um, he's earned his money. I think he's making what, like 44 million a year. Yep. Crazy ass number like that. So, I mean, if we're on its face, he's doing his job. Yeah. Renegotiate how much I'm making, bro. This I, this TV deal ain't just for y'all. You got to pay me what my price is going up too. So, you know. Technically, uh, your boss, but uh, I digress. Go ahead. Next one. Hey, man, Mickey. you can keep saying that shit, but I don't really care. You should. Conflict I mean, of interest. Go not ahead. really. It is. I'm but so far ahead. at the bottom of the rung, it doesn't really matter. It does matter. It doesn't. It does matter. It really doesn't. It really does. It really doesn't. It really does. It really doesn't. Your checks, no so. your checks, your money. Okay, everything. there's always going to be a commissioner of the league. Your family. Go, that's, so if it's not Roger Goodell, it's going to be somebody else. Exactly. But my check ain't but affected in, by in that. Both, in, in both cases, you should, you should not comment on your CEO. I'm just saying. Even when I was an intern, it's still a conflict of interest. They make it very clear, <sighs> sure. especially as a a journalist. But we can get into that later in in the monologue. All right, whatever, bro. All right, go ahead. Next one, Nikki. Next one. Um, next year, the NFL is playing the first ever football game on Black Friday. Touchdown or turnover? I'm going to say it's a touchdown uh, because the NFL already owns Thanksgiving. Why not roll it into Friday? I know it's going to cut into some of the college ratings, viewership, but the NFL doesn't care about that. So I'm going to say it's a touchdown. Any? I don't know. Should I, should I no comment this one? Maybe you should. It's up to you. All I know is... Kids everywhere are going to be mad as hell because they're not going to want to go Black Friday shopping with their mom. But somebody Nobody to, goes Black Friday shopping anyways. But somebody's going to... No, they're still doing that. Especially mm. in the UK, there's videos of people getting trampled every year on mm. Black Friday. So, But the fact that there's actually going to be an NFL game... Now, imagine if that game's in London. I don't know. But like the fact that there's going to be a game on Black Friday, people are going to watch. So it's going to be interesting how the cyber sales. That's going to be interesting. Dude, Black Friday has already been, like, the numbers have already been going down. The Cyber Monday numbers have already been going up. Cyber Monday is the wave, dude. 
That's what yeah, I'm saying. That's, like, yeah, that's, that's already that's been. what's gonna be interesting. That's that's already been happening. I mean, I don't know if you've been to a mall lately, but they're kind of weird ass places like Delamo. Well, not Delamo, kind of Delamo, but like South Bay Gallery is just a ghost town. Every mall is weird now because it's just like the fringes of society. It's like teenagers who want to get away from their parents, like old people who don't know how to use a computer, and like weirdo hipster people who just want to like get their hands on random goods that they can't get online. Like, So yeah, the malls are just weird in general now. On Black Friday... They're probably going to be slightly less weird because more people will go, but still. I try not to go to the mall if I don't absolutely have to. And usually when I have to, it's because I'm returning something from Amazon. That's crazy. Yeah. It's all a Did you even say that? Thought twist. You said that 20 years ago, people would look at you like you have a third head. Yeah, man. Well, I paid some Pisces dude 100 bucks to give me a ride up from SoFi. That got in a stranger a car and could have got chopped up. That was such a scam. You could have just I, caught the bus to the train but station. I, but I'm, so, but I'm so used to getting in a stranger's car now. It doesn't really matter. I would have just walked to the bus stop, caught the 210, and then caught an Uber from the train station. It would have cost you. It would have taken you an extra 30 Yeah, minutes. but then the other thing is I probably would have got the Uber canceled because the ride would have been too short anyways. Nah, it's easier to get a ride from the train station because... Nah, but I've tried to get Because there was a too. concert that night. The I've My tried Chemical to get, Romance concert. You yeah. picked the worst possible night I've tried to, to call get, Uber. I tried to get them from, um, I've tried to get them from like the Chevron, the Chili's. I've tried to get them from literally every business around SoFi. And no, you're not you even still end Uber. up, I still end up waiting like I told you, 30 you gotta, minutes to an hour. You got to call the bus. You got to hop on the bus or you got to hop on the shuttle. Bro, I only live five miles from SoFi. And you're not going to walk all the way down Prairie. But I'm telling you, I've walked damn near to the bridge and still not been able to get a fucking Uber. Like, I'm telling you, we've we've walked, like, bro, the bridge over on Imperial where I got the car accident. We walked far as fuck one time, bro. Imperial what? We made fucking miles. I'm telling you, we walked to the 105. You walked on, god damn. I'm telling you, I still couldn't get a fucking Uber, bro. You think this shit is games? At the Crenshaw train station? Motherfucker, think he knows everything. No, I'm yeah, saying, bro, I'm telling you, I walked down Prairie to damn near the 105, bro. Damn near is not right. I'm saying, if you go to the Crenshaw train station, it is easier to get an Uber. You'll wait 15 minutes, bro. But it's guaranteed. The bus to Crenshaw station is free. On game days. And they even have a shuttle yeah, that takes you to the one on Hawthorne. That's like $2. But the reason why it was so bad is because there was a My Chemical Romance but the concert shuttles, at the forum. the shuttles are their own shit show because yeah. they have long-ass fucking lines. What I'm telling you... Wow, long are going off today. You've been great ever since he cut his hair. But yeah, um, bottom line is you got caught in all that horse shit is because it was a My Chemical Romance concert. They had like six nights in a row. I think they sold all that shit out. So you have My Chemical Romance at the Forum. It's yeah. been busting all week. And then this Chargers game that was an utter disappointment. All right. Now, last one. Nikki? I would, that's horrible. You yeah, last, just walked out. last touchdown and turnover we got... So, um, Elijah Moore, he's dissatisfied with the Jets. He's trying to get traded. Yeah, man, I'm going to say that's a touchdown. Uh, I feel like I feel like there are plenty of teams who could use a playmaker like Moore, especially the Raiders. So, yeah, why stay with the Jets? Their whole Patriots. receiver room is a mess. Packers. <laughs> he said the Patriots. Nah, Patriots don't need anything else. They can suffer where they're at. Yeah, we do. Aguilar's ass, dude. Born is on the bench, so I don't know. Hey, y'all paid him. They paid him. I have no sympathy in my heart for the Patriots. Y'all All gotta right. get like y'all gotta get like 0 and 15 down bad for me to feel sorry for. I can't feel sorry for the Patriots. Y'all have had too much winning. All right. Lucas, your turn. Take your tangent. Team up. Yeah, um, do that ball hard. Going off the Patriots, um, you know, there's. Oh wait, hold on. 
The rundown. Yeah, read up. The uh, rundown. Yeah, yeah. Richard. Sh- it's sorry. Like three. There you Richard go. Sherman. Westbrook out here doing the Lord's work. <laughs> Richard Sherman and Marshawn's conversations about Russell Wilson. Um, you know, kind of bad mouthing him, especially uh, Richard Sherman. I mean, seems to have ill feelings towards Russ. So, uh, you know, take her tangent. Perfect. Um, I don't know, man. I think it's just one of those things, like, where it's like you have a group chat, but then it, like, comes to life, and it's broadcasted on Amazon Prime, and, like, it's real life. Like, that's just what it is. Like, I don't know. It's, it's I don't have a take or a tangent. I feel like it's just real life. Kenny? Uh, it's just sure. It's like, I have, I have, I have this feeling to like finally be vindicated after years of being like wronged. Like, I know what this feels like, but he's like next level petty and he's just like living in the schadenfreude of Russell Wilson's pain and suffering. He's like, I have no idea what the fuck that means. Word of the day. What did you say? Schadenfreude. I think I said it right. It's a German word for like finding happiness in the misery of other people. You couldn't have just said that? No, because it's a German word. And since you deleted scuttlebutt you could off have, the rundown, you could have just I had said, to come up with a different word. You literally could have just said that sooner, but okay. No, but that's the word that, that's what the word means in German, because there was no word for that in German until they said, you know, Schadenfreude. But anyway, so yeah, it's Marshall Lynch actually cares about Russ as a person because he's still a good dude. But Sherm and everybody else is like, man, fuck this guy. Like, everybody else, you can directly get in touch with them by getting their phone number. I got to call his handler to talk to Russ. Who are you? One extra Super Bowl had you just handed the ball off. Like, we lost the Super Bowl because of Russ. That's what their mindset. And he said, they're like, oh, the veterans, like, he was only a year younger than us. He was only a year younger than me. Which is crazy when you think about it. He's only a year younger than Sherman and all those other guys. I mean, how long was he, he said, in college? Like four or five years? Yeah. Sherman was in college for a while, too. He mm. destroyed his knee. That's why he went from receiver to corner. Um, it was a miracle his knee got reconstructed because you don't want to go look up Richard Sherman knee injury against USC. That shit is pretty grotesque. It's, it's up there in the top five grotesque knee injuries. Um, Twine. But, yeah. <laughs> The, the funny thing is, the Clippers people, have like seven playoff rotations. Yeah, and Lonnie Richard, Lonnie Walker was throwing the ball way too hard at the basket after that steal. Like, come on, Westbrook got you like three steals in a row. You got to convert that basket. Anyway, um, but it just when you break down, because it's never going away, and I'm pretty sure Richard Sherman feels like Russell Wilson is a Hall of Fame quarterback. All right, Lucas, next one. There you go. So, take your tangent. Robbie Anderson fighting with his coaches and then getting sent to the locker room. Listen, man, I'm just going to say Robbie Anderson already looks like one I would mess around with. Like, you know how they always make those jokes like, oh, if you're ever going to get beat up, like, just act crazy because everyone's afraid of crazy. Like Anderson looks like that dude, so yeah, I wouldn't mess with him. And honestly, I was looking forward to him going to the Cardinals. I thought it'd be a good spot for him, but I don't know what it is. Like receiver has not been the problem, but it also hasn't been the solution. Like they have guys there, they just haven't been able to put it all together. At least this year. I mean, hopefully Hopkins back. Helps, but I don't think he did much this this week, according to my fantasy team. Which goes back to my point that Cliff Kingsbury is like the... It's not even white privilege. It's just like... Just like... I don't even... Like nepotism? Like, it's a form of nepotism, nepotism where... from who? 
That was a nepotism. It's like spread. It's like, oh, he ran a spread offense in college, and he coached Mahomes, so he must be a great head coach. Like, uh, yeah, everybody thought just because Adam Gase was coaching up Peyton Manning, which he wasn't coaching up Peyton Manning, that he was going to be a great coach. I feel like it's that. That kind of thinking, like, oh, he's an offensive-minded head coach. No, he just passed the ball a lot, and he couldn't run, and he didn't make great decisions as a coach. So, like, his scheme. It's not nepotism. It's car chasing. I, like, it feels like nepotism based off the system that he runs. Like, oh, only spread offense coaches well, are going to be chasing. good head coaches. That was the trend. That was the trend, getting – Meanwhile, young, how long? How long? Young, is- fiery, white, offensive-minded coaches like that was just their trend. McVay, Shanahan, and they were hoping Rule and Kingsbury would be next, but it didn't go that way. So, but that's my point. It's like, oh, he's a he's like the next wave, like Sean McVay. No, he's not. And even then, Sean McVay inherited a, a pretty good team. That's not like the Rams are trash. All right, next one. Lucas. Cats leaving that Laker game early. Yep. So take her tangent. Tua doesn't remember anything after getting two or three concussions. I mean, but, shit, I wouldn't want to remember anything either. Like, you don't remember anything after getting hit. Yeah, especially with those bright ass color uniforms and hey, Miami uniforms can be kind of nice. Can be kind of tight. I'm not saying they're not tight. I'm just saying, like, that's a lot, that's a lot of stimulation after three concussions. Like and like to put that uniform on again would definitely be triggering to me. So it's probably better that he doesn't remember onward and upward. Any? I mean, usually if you get a concussion after a year, your fingers start throwing up gang signs. You're not going to remember it because your brain is scrambled. Fair. Brooke has two points and went <laughs> 0 for 11. Holy Woo! shit. Holy shit. That's a fade. All right. That's a fade. Next, last one. 0 for 2, or 2 points, uh, 0 for 11. So the last one was the Ravens signing uh, old man Deshaun Jackson. So I guess he's still got it. Take her tangent. Listen, man. I still got that 4-4, four, four, that 4-3 four, speed. I'm not going to kid ourselves. I'm not going to slander him because, like Kenny said, he still got speed. He's an L.A. legend. And I'm always going to root for Deshaun Jackson. But, yeah, I really don't know what he has left in the tank. Just enough to be a slot receiver. expecting him to turn around all the Ravens' troubles, I think, is unrealistic. Because I lived that story last year with the Raiders. You know, I I don't know if the Ravens have the Cowboys on their schedule. But if if, if they do, he's definitely a must-start for that game. (laughs) He'll find a way to get six touchdowns in that that game for sure, at least. But, yeah, I don't know. I mean, I don't know what he's going to bring to the team, but. Hall of Fame receiver, by the way. It doesn't hurt. I mean, dog, Kevin White just had a big-ass almost touchdown for the Saints. Like, I was happy for him, man. I forgot Kevin White's still in the league. Me too. That's why I was like, damn. His knee got it. They have so many injuries, though. He found himself on the roster, and. Good for him, man. It was nice to see him get get loose a little bit. Yeah. All right. Saints is where you go to just rebuild yourself, apparently. Thank you both. All right. Moving on. Fair fade. First one. Kenny. Kanye being a a toxic Gemini per usual. He was on uh, some show. Drink Champs. Don't disrespect Drink Champs. Oh, he was on Drink Champs? That's the whole point. Of why all this is coming out. Oh, I didn't see that on. You didn't see the shit. This is the whole focal point. He of the went story. on drink. He went on drink chat. And yes, he was no, it was drink. three hours. They pulled it off YouTube. He was just on. He drink. shitted on Diddy, a guy who you know Nori works for. Oh, see, I would thought you were talking about the comment he had with that host of CNBC. No, 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 that was after he, he made a where, bunch he, where of where he basically called him a remark. where he basically called him a broke boy on the air. Oh yeah, Pier- no, fuck Pierce Morgan, and fuck then, him uh, and his mama. And then there was the whole um, no, fuck Pierce Morgan him buying parlor thing, which was a lot. Yeah. So I thought that's what you were talking about. No, 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 no. Him saying what he said, and then the whole interview getting deleted, and everybody's like, "You put Nori." So in a what bad he spot. say about Diddy then? Because Diddy was rocking with him from the beginning. 
pretty much like he exposed some text messages that Diddy said. That you can find the whole episode on YouTube. It's just not like they took the whole thing down. But um, he made some anti-Semitic remarks. But what did he really, say about Diddy? Pretty much was like you know if you just doing the White Lives Matter shit for clout to get money and you're going to do something positive with the money for black people then go for it. If not, stop the cooning or something like that, allegedly. But pretty much, you know, Kanye or Ye exposed that. And here's my thing about Kanye. So basically Diddy was in on it is what you're saying. Allegedly. There's a whole, you got to go watch the whole. Well, the whole thing is it's supposed to be enough to be on this rundown and you're not giving a good enough synopsis for me to wait. No, on because it. like I could tell you, but you're not going to understand the context. It's just like, well, why'd you just put it on the rundown? Because the whole world knows what Kanye said except you. Do you, you guys know what Kanye last, said? You're the last person to fucking know what Kanye said. They don't know said. what Kanye said. No clue, bro. He, always, yeah. he always says a bunch of shit. That yeah, bro. Absolutely. Nobody that's knows. Po- not, not a lot of people know. He people, said so much shit. No one knows what you're talking but about. But my point is, that's been, he's being a toxic as Gemini. He's just being toxic himself. He only cares about himself. Like, he only brought up Jewish people because it was a hot button issue to piss people off. Because the more he can piss people off around a certain issue, then he can throw his bullshit in to where it's like, oh, actually, you made a good point about this random thing about the fashion industry and racism. Or, oh, you're talking about how... Um, so so I guess made. what's the question and the act of disrespect? Because that's what the, the segment is about. The whole disrespect is the bullshit that Kanye does where he pretends to care about certain issues or really he's just running his mouth for his own end. Like, they're like, oh, cancel Kanye. Like, bro, Kanye been canceled to me, but not for the reasons you think. Um, he's bipolar, man. It's like, outside of that, he's been an asshole. He's been, and there's people close to him who say that's fake, that he's really just milking that shit. So it's like Sci High and all types of people who work directly with him. Saying that his bipolar he owes Big Sean is fake? money. Yes. That his bipolar. It's a lot of shit about him. They say yeah, it's bro, fake. Yeah, bro. I don't. I don't know. You. You. You, you got to have more substantial information here. You don't to have throw any substantial information. It's yeah, he, I have. Sci High went on Drink Champs. It's people, Sean Winnell drink champs. It's people who've said, like, yo. The whole thing about bipolar, fake. though, is that you can't say someone is faking a bipolar. They can be perfectly no, not fine faking, one day. And not the faking day. bipolar, but milking shit to get himself in a good light. He even said, like, oh, if these fashion industries actually just work with me, like, I would go back to them. So why the fuck are you sitting here yelling at Sway 10 years ago about ownership when you don't really want ownership? You just want the people... Who are in this industry? Who but don't that's fuck what he with said. You, like he you. said Sway was right. Sway had the answer. Ten years later, yeah. And now he's he, but he flip flops. He talks out of both sides because he's mouth. bipolar. That's literally what being that's bipolar not the is. Reason. He's a fucking narcissist, bro. That's no. That's kind of what being bipolar is. No, too. It's, no, it's not. It can be no, a part it's of different. it. It's it can different. be a part of it. He's a pathological narcissist. That's he, part of being bipolar. No, you can have not. different personalities. It's different moods, emotional states. Not one day I'm gonna talk about Jewish people. One day I'm gonna talk about uh, my wife. Yeah, and bro. Extortion you you, you, and you, all gotta, you shit. gotta do some work, bro. No, that's you all gotta connected. do some work. That's all connected. Kanye only came the out emotional, talking to people. No, the no, emotional no. connects to the thoughts, which connect to the actions, bro. It's bro. all connected. You can. It's chemistry. Okay. Like, yeah, the emotions are messed up, but that leads you to have. No, his different motives to act his a certain way are one day serving and act differently another day. That's that's, that's not what though. being bipolar that's, is, bro. For him, it's not though. He's come out and said, like, nah, my, my man's I'm fine. This is what I really believe. He's yeah, come but out he's said, come out and said he's on his meds before and not been on his meds. All right, you know what? That's you what can keep standing is. for Kanye. I'm not even standing for you Kanye. Are. How am I standing for Kanye? Because you're not holding him accountable for the bullshit he keeps doing. You haven't even asked me about that. I'm still trying to figure out what the bullshit is. I can't tell you. I'm not bring. I don't have fucking notes for the whole three hours and forty five minute interview. I'm not gonna sit up here and reel it off to you. You can go back and Google it. Like there's articles. You can like you can find it. I'm not giving you every talking point he said, but he does the same spiel every time when he wants to go on drink champs or when he wants to talk to black people. He either wants to sell us on something or in general when he talks to the public it'd be some bullshit like bro you got kim kardashian pregnant you got in the bed with that family 
I don't give a fuck. That had nothing to do with being bipolar. That's you. Stop Bro, making that's your problems part of being all bipolar, our problems. Though. That's part of why. Why don't you understand that? Oh my that? fucking god! Did you just see you that? like you don't understand what being so bipolar, is? bipolar? So everybody, Reggie's bipolar. So everybody, fuck with the Kardashians. They had mental health problems. Is what you're telling me? No, but He's what the only I'm telling one who gets you. A pass. Okay, cool. But what I'm telling you Let's is, just that's, move on, bro. That, what I'm telling you is that's what being bipolar is. Kanye you can, would, Con- you can do Kanye something. Kanye could one convince day. you to sell him your fucking apartment. That's, I'm convinced Kanye can convince you. You would give him your his social. I'm you not would give even him defending your Kanye social security right now. number. I'm I'm you talking are, about being bipolar. I'm not talking about being bipolar. I you are talking about being bipolar. No, you're saying he's doing all these things because he's bipolar. No, he's a narcissistic. I'm prick. telling you, that's why he does things and then takes it back. That's part of being bipolar. No, that's not no. All right. I think, I think we're getting off topic here. That's yeah, not. man. I don't. I don't know why you don't understand what being bipolar. I understand. Is, that's I, how I, I have people in my family who are bipolar. Yeah, so they do don't I. go around doing the shit that Kanye does. It's different for everybody, bro. But that's it's different. That's when you have nine that, billion dollars, and you're constantly it. trying to get people to be on your side in the public eye to get more money for your shit, and because Adidas owns the Yeezys now, like. So what does that mean? He's just out here trying to get clout, saying anything that'll stick to the fan to get people's attention, and people are tired of it. It's it's annoying after a while. That's so why that's people tune. That's why so people tune the fuck out. That's what your your five your seven minute rant should have been. That's what your fair face should have been. Kanye just saying whatever he wants for clout. You said that's you said that's literally because he's bipolar, and I'm like that's not because he's bipolar. But that's he just what I'm does saying. it because he's a fucking narcissist. But. That's part of being bipolar, bro. Like I don't understand why you don't get that. Okay, so everything he can be, everything he does can be explained away through a mental illness. Got you. Cool. Basically, yeah. Cool. Pretty much. Okay. All right. Kenny, cool. Kenny, maybe it's because he's a toxic Gemini. Maybe that's why. That's who he talks out of both sides <laughs> of his face. Blame it on the stars. Yup. Damn, bro. I'm actually a piece of musty tars. Gemini, so I'm kind of hurt by that, bro. <laughs> I mean, you don't have $9 billion, so it's like you're not out here trying to, like, clout chase. So. I don't even know if he has $9 billion. He says he has $9 billion, and then. Yeah, but in assets or in. Cash. Liquid. I don't think he has. And then there's, like, a video I don't of him. Think, I don't think he Candace has. With Candace Owens, and... like, they were at a bank, and like, you got to get your money out of this bank by the end of the year, or some shit like that. So it's always something with Kanye. Like, I don't, I just yeah, don't, I don't care. I don't think he has $9 billion in liquidity. I don't, I don't think there's many people. I don't even know if the oh, government has $9 billion in When we said he got $9 billion in assets and money. Yeah, in maybe in assets. Sure. I could believe that. But in liquid? Nah. Hell yeah. no. Nobody That's, has that. I mean, Bezos definitely got that. Bezos got a warehouse of money he forgot about. I don't know, man. He might. He gave his, he gave his wife half. I don't know. He Bezos might. Bezos gave, gave his wife half his fucking money. And she went into a lot of cash, bro. That's a lot of cash. And then Bezos went into, Bezos' wife ended up divorcing that teacher a couple years later. But that's the thing is, like, rich people don't sit on money like that. Like, why? They, they don't just have $9 billion in the bank account. They have access to it, though. Not really, though. It's usually tied up in stocks, investments, businesses, real estate, seven streams of income. Yeah, I understand that. But I'm telling you, um, I'm Trust, pretty sure. REITs. I'm pretty sure if Warren Buffett wanted to bring out a fucking dump truck. Warren Buffett doesn't even have $9 billion in liquidity. He has reserves, but that's all through Berkshire Hathaway. He can't touch that money like that. Yeah, but I'm saying if you wanted to solidify your money and you're a multi-billionaire, you could do it. But in theory, yes, you don't just have fucking nine billion dollars laying around. And then even with that, it's like you still gotta pay taxes on it, you still gotta pay fees on it. So it's like overseas, especially if you have not. a Swiss bank account, all types of shit. All right, moving on. Dodger fans watch their record setting team lose to the San Diego Padres on Sunday. Wow. Um, did the Padres win yesterday or today? I'm not a Padres fan. I don't give a shit. I should know. You should know. You're a Padres fan. Pete's a Padres fan, everybody. Been a Padres fan for three seasons. I've been a Padres fan. Nah, I feel like six, bro. You were a Padres fan when I met you. I was an Angels fan then. What? Yeah, it's tied up. 1-1. Wait, you were an Angels fan? Yeah, I've been an Angels fan. I've been an Angels fan since they beat the the Giants. in the the Yep, I saw that. Yep, so um, I'm going to say... 
It's fair because Dodgers have been shitting on. I mean, the Padres have been shitting on the Dodgers. The Dodgers have been shitting on Padres fans all year long, like the past forever, honestly. Really last 15 years. Yeah, but especially the past two years since they choked. the Padres got Machado and the whole Tatis thing. And yeah, the Padres choked like two years ago. My fuck was doing et cetera. Kumbia, was dancing Kumbia in the streets. That shit was lit. So, yeah, man, I think it's fair. Like, they finally got over that hump and they're looking like a real serious team. So, why not celebrate? I mean, San fuck Diego, the Dodgers. San Diego has really nothing else going for them sports wise. They're the only show in town. San Diego State's not doing that great this year in football. All right, last one. Washington Commanders gave away almost 15K to a fan via contest, and the check bounced. The motherfucking check bounced. Fade, fair fade. That's a fade like a motherfucker. That's definitely a fade. Then you got charged a $15 fee, and then they, hey, immediately got, <laughs> they had to wire. His account went negative, and then they had to wire and shit to him. I mean, you better wire this fee too, bitch. You better give me double the price of the fee. Yo. It was like fourteen thousand eight hundred twenty-two dollars. What, what do I look like showing up to fucking Chase, cashing a fifteen thousand dollar big ass check, and it bounces? <laughs> it bounces, bro. And you gotta like, pay the fee. Fuck, showing up in my Crocs and my work from home fucking pajamas, like. And he won. People, sh- yeah, I'm he won that shit like three be months on a ago. No flight list after that. He won it like three, four months ago, bro. That's bad. They just got him the money in October. Told you, not everyone has liquid assets. <laughs> That's fucked. Is that the title? Pretty much. All right. Bipolar people don't have liquid. My assets are bipolar. Let's uh let's move on to the rants. That's a sick ass stat line. Uh, five steals, two points, zero for eleven. Nikki Lucas, one of you guys want to go first? Talk to the people. Let them know what you're burning on. Right. Want to inspire right. them? Anything you want to address? There's a quarterback. There's a quarterback controversy in New England, bro. Ah. Okay. Because, I mean, look, man. Take us there. I mean, Bailey Zappi, fourth round pick, dude. He wears a number four. Who does that remind you of, bro? <laughs> Is that a hill you want to die on? East quarterback. Come on, bro. He's basically the next Dak, is what I'm saying. Okay, he's gonna take the starting job. Uh, honestly, Mac looked rough. Like before Zap even came in, like before Mac even got the ankle injury. So it's like, but also it is kind of different because Mac is in his second year, and then Romo was like already a vet. So, I mean, like, but the the past nation is riding with Mac because it's like a. 15th overall pick or whatever so i don't know i mean i feel like zappy could take the starting job but that's how i feel about it that was good i like that but he won't i think he will i think you need to give mac jones a little bit more time okay tell that to the twenty thousand people who signed that petition or whatever hey baby (laughs) baby zap was all right at the senior bowl all right, go ahead, Nikki. Your your time. Cool. Um, my hot take of this week, I guess, is I don't know. I'm gonna keep defending Baker Mayfield. Probably he's been getting a lot of hate in the press recently. You know, I know I know Kenny hates his guts, and <laughs> I think that he deserves a little bit more credit. You know, he 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 got thrown into an offense he wasn't comfortable with as far as the Panthers go. I think he needed a little bit more time to develop. And then with, you know, Matt Rule getting fired and then now his entire offense is kind of being, you know, ripped out under him, especially with McCaffrey going, I mean, he's only going to get worse and people are just going to keep dogging on him even more. I mean, I could see him even exiting the league permanently after this, if he ends up getting, you know, uh, traded or released, whatever. But um, I don't know. It's just unfortunate. I think, I think that he had the talent was there. It's just the um, circumstances around him kind of brought him down, you know, both in Cleveland and in uh, Carolina. So people are going to keep talking mess. You know, I I could go, I could, trust me, I could go into like great detail about it, but I'm not going to sit here and freak out. But it's unfortunate because I think that he's going to be laughed out of the league basically when he didn't really have a chance to uh, rejuvenate himself after leaving the Browns. No one feels sorry for Sam Darnold, but 
I got you. That man is an abuse survivor. Yeah, you're you're a fanboy. We got it. I mean, what if Baker ends up on the Patriots? <laughs> That'll be okay. That's not happening. Nah, nah, nah. I hope <laughs> what it if Kyler and Baker end up on the Patriots? Nah, 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 nah. Okay, that's not happening. Maybe take if uh, I mean if the Cardinals could take on his contract. Yeah, fuck it. I'll take Kyler. Fuck it. If Baker on the <laughs> Patriots is gonna happen. Twenty twenty four. Bill Belichick likes white, non-mobile, slow quarterback. That is true. Matt, yeah, Matt, Matt ran like a four eight. I'm just saying. Matt yeah, ran a four eight. Matt was Matt ran kind of pretty good at the at the combines. Probably washed yeah. cam. But... As as we can get though. All right, Kenny, you want to go first or you want me to go? I'll go real quick. Go ahead. Um, let me introduce the word I was gonna say next week. But um yeah, I'm pretty much just uh off Kanye and his bullshit. Um the thing is don't spill two or three secrets, spill everything. Like stop leaking shit to make you look good in the public. No, why don't you just le- tell everything? You already said that Drake fucked uh Chris Kardashian. He said that in the Drink Champs interview. So my thing is just Tell everything, bro. Tell everything. Stop stop giving us bits and pizzas. Cause like people oh, that's so I mean, if you could if you could smash Chris Jenner and like put yourself on game, would you do it, Pete? That's that's wealth and influence you don't have. So so would you rather have a dinner with Jay Z or smash and like smash and be like Chris Jenner's like I take, cool boy. I take a uh, appetizer with Jay Z because I won't make it to the second course. <laughs> you have to probably pay for that meal because you know Jay Z don't be. I'll go to the bathroom and dip out. Tots are gonna pepper spray the fuck out of you. Salons gonna beat your ass in the parking lot. You're not getting out of there without without paying for it. I'm not paying for it, and I, like I said, I'm not even staying for the end. I'm gonna stand up, Jay Z. I'm gonna be. I'm gonna be on. How vice. you gonna stand up, Jay Z? You know we got shooters out here. Right? I had lunch with Jay Z and stood him up. All you are gonna hear is a ah, and, and this get, is how it went. Get snuffed. Salon's gonna be sitting in the back seat of your car with like some Vaseline on her knuckles and like a, a fucking a coat hanger ready to fuck you. All up. right, man. This is your rant. Hurry up. This is my rant. I'm just saying. So you would rather? I'm just saying a dinner with Jay Z. Or like some favors with Chris Jenner to like up yourself in the game. I I think you'd be surprised. I think that could be a poll going forward. I'm just saying. But anyway, uh yeah, off Kanye and just uh, just off these celebrities in, in general. It's it's more important shit going on out here. Um literally like we're running out of water. Like we're literally running out of fucking water. Are you fucking kidding in California, me? California, like Colorado River's kind of drying up. Me? It's like so. Much- That's not news, bro. That's like a a twenty year uh, phenomenon. I know, and it's just like, are we just are we just slowly just creeping towards oblivion? <laughs> oh, hey, uh, the- w- w- welcome to twenty twenty two. Did you just wake the fuck up? Like, like you can't drink water in the fucking not the multiverse. What's that shit called? The uh. The verse, the metaverse. You can't drink water in the metaverse, bro. I mean, I mean, you can't drink water in Mississippi right now because the water's all like brown and black. So, yeah, that, that's murder water right there. So it's like, I don't know. The price of food, everything's going up. It's just like, there's just so much other shit to worry about. Like honestly, who's planning Christmas gifts this year? That's just some things I've been thinking about. Like yeah, but we already been over this. You're kind of a scumbag. When I'm it comes not a to scumbag. Gifts. No, I don't. I either give you You're money kind of a, or I give you a gift. That's a but scumbag. it's not in between shit. No, you said you only you prefer to only give money. I prefer, but I you still said give you gifts. don't really give gifts. You said that last year. In we had this years, whole controversy. In recent years, yes. We had this whole in recent controversy. years. Yes, I will. I will cash app you a hundred dollars. You see, Merry Christmas. You see, but uh, he started. He starts off the show. Talking about how he's all right, and now he's over here 
Backtracking on a take that he had last year. Bacani, nah, I'm just, I'm just Bacani noticing. Is a I get more annoyed near the holidays. Bacani now. is a problem. I just get more annoyed near the holidays. Well, I'm not out here like telling you Drake <laughs> fucked my my baby. You would do mom. that though. No, you I thought wouldn't. us list list fucking truth joined the Alabama because that was just funny. <laughs> you really <laughs> believed it. I didn't, but you I was did. hoping we all no. saw your face. We're I didn't here, believe bro. it. Bro. I hoped it was all true. We I hoped it was here, true. Bro. It was funny because it's like, fuck British Parliament. I'm going to go work with Nick Saban. That's way less of a struggle, and it's free money. All right. Are you done yet? Black Adam might suck, but I'm still going to go see it. I told you that a month ago. You were talking bad shit about that. I literally I literally said exactly I'm making that. his ass beat you were like, every TV Black spot. Black Adam car looks trash. And I was like, but you're still going to go see it. And you were like, yeah, you're probably Bro, right. they literally made him Black Adam, bro. <laughs> He's black and Samoan, <laughs> and then Hart and Cart like, and then Hawkman is black too. But it's like, well, are you gonna kill him or reincarnate him? Because I mean, what 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 origin story are we going with? Because if that's actually Carter Hall, then they can't kill him. They're probably gonna kill one of those secondary characters though. They can't kill Pierce, Pierce Brosnan because he looks like Doctor Fate perfectly. But that's kind of he should have a backpack. The fact that he just carries the fucking helmet bothers me. Have a backpack, make it disappear. Like, at least fucking Doctor Strange wears his drip on him and fights with his drip on. He ain't got to let me go get my fucking cape of uh, whatever, my cloak of whatever. No, he just comes ready with the shits. Pierce Brosnan just got a fucking helmet. Like, he's a Power Ranger who took his helmet off. The shit looks goofy. But anyway, whatever. It looks like a CW movie. It's DC, yeah. And, and shit, the way the Flash is going, they might as well not have Ezra, Ezra, Ezra Miller do it. That's why it was funny when they canceled Batgirl and they were like, yeah, we just don't see any real benefit to putting like movie productions on streaming that's for TV. And I was like... Got the same exact score. I was like, that's literally like the point CW and what DC does, but okay. I mean, I get you. I, I don't. I don't know if you're necessarily wrong, but that's... Kind of been the beat, so. Yep. Um. All right, so I was already planning to talk about this before Ken- Kenny had his little unsensitive tirade about mental health, but Get the fuck out of here. I was just going to say, um, like, I saw this uh, help a reporter out that was basically like, oh, I'm looking for an expert to talk about mental health. Like, should everybody be screened for mental health? And it was like, does everybody have anxiety and depression? And it's like, And then I saw another thing on Instagram and it was like kids in the UK are all using drugs before like 23 and they're using it more now than previous generations and they're because life sucks and they're trying to catch up and like all these things that they're dealing with pandemic inflation, et cetera, et cetera. And I was just like, is all this stuff like really new? Like, is it really just because we're so connected and we know so much that we have nothing to hope for? That we're just, like, over-optimizing ourselves and just making ourselves really sad? And, like, is that just where where we are? Or is it always been that way and now we just know about it more because we talk about it more often? Or is this just kind of like the natural... I don't like arc of human life. Like now that we've been at the top of the food chain for so long, like we just overanalyze ourselves and like essentially make ourselves sad and scared. And I mean, even to the extent of like suicide, like is that just like a natural course of like life of human evolution? Like, I don't know. That's just kind of what I've been thinking about. Like is The mental health epidemic, like, is it something that's always been going on? Is it because we're just moving faster than ever? Or, you know, is it just where we're at as, you know, an evolved species? So that's just kind of what I've been thinking about because, like, obviously, you know, having this podcast, working with Kenny, working in PR, you know, I do a lot. And, you know, helping raise my siblings, like, I do a lot. So I've been feeling burnt out. My back's been killing. And it's just like, 
Like, is this just what life is? Or is this, like, just because we're in a shitty time? Like, so I don't really have an answer, but it's just something that I've been thinking about. And it's something that clearly a lot of people are thinking about. So at the very least, it's important to know that we're not alone. And we're all trying to figure it out together. And, yeah, hopefully this podcast brought you, like, an hour and a half of not thinking about that. And maybe football brings you another few hours this weekend. And so, you might deep dive on Kanye takes. So, yeah, man, this is Touchdowns or Tangents. I'm PD Camarillo. I'm Kenny Barry. Uh, shout out to the crew, Lucas and Nikki. Thank you both. Shout out to everyone who listens to us, fucks with us. Shout out to your favorite streaming app, favorite podcast app. TDs underscore tangents on Instagram and Twitter. Follow us there. And lastly, uh, Wiener Central, you need your ass beef for coming out with chili cheese tamales. Like, for real. They've been had those. Yeah, but I, I've said this on Pat previous years. Y'all are really, like, I should, I'm going to call it OSHA. A lot of, place, a lot of pe- places have that. That's like it's a, a thing. German restaurant. It's like a Wiener thing. Central is a German restaurant selling fucking chili cheese Harold's tamales. in Chicago sells those, and they're, like, super famous. Yeah, for but selling that's those. Harold's. Saying, I'm just saying, if you show, if you pulled up on a Wiener Central to get chili cheese tamales, because you want to rush, yeah, you know, they're, shit, they're, sold out your they're body. in a bigger. It, the, the person who's buying that is more of the problem than the, <laughs> than the establishment. But you're offering it. But I'm telling you, they're not the only one who's offering it. <laughs> People right. are buying it. They're the problem. San Francisco, you can shoot up heroin legally. Like, then bring. We didn't give you the heroin. I mean, you have methadone clinics. You technically did, but whatever. Bottom line is, yeah, that's some wild shit. Chili cheese tamales. Like, don't do that to yourself. All right, y'all. Stay safe. Peace. Peace.